I get a lot of questions about traveling with a cat. People travel with dogs a lot, but you don't see a lot of cats out here. So I'm going to try and answer those questions for you. So the first thing you should do if you're going to travel with a cat is get the right cat. If your cat doesn't travel well, consider trading him in for one who does. I'm kidding. I wouldn't trade this guy in for anything. He's amazing. Right, kitty? Yeah. But it is important to realize that not all cats travel as nicely as this guy, who certainly doesn't behave well for the camera. Not all cats travel well, so before you hit the road, you should figure out an escape plan for your kitty just in case it turns out to not be one who adapts well to the road. So uh, some kind of backup plan, somewhere you can drop the kitty off to live a happy life that is not on the road, just in case your cat isn't as awesome as my cat. Yeah, he knows this to be true. It's the tongue. Let's talk about the necessities. I keep wet and dry food as well as water for him on a little mat between the front seats of the van. Uh, that's, that's his spot. That's where he knows to go for food, water, all that good stuff. I also have lids for these bowls so that I can close them up so that stuff doesn't go flying all over the place when we're actually on the road. So you can't actually eat or drink while we're moving, but uh, I never drive long enough stints at a time where he's without his... Yeah, I forgot that was on. Of course, what goes in must come out, which is why when we designed the layout of this van, we actually designed a place for his litter box right into it. Being right by the back door, at least when the motorcycle's off, it's easy to just get right into the litter box, pull it out, clean it, without having to carry it through the middle of my living space. It's also nice in that the roof vent is all the way in the back. So if either human or kitty, usually kitty, makes a great big stink, you can just crank the exhaust fan and get that smell out of here. Do not go in there. Woo! You may wonder why doesn't he just go outside to do his thing? Well, Lister was an indoor cat for seven years before he hit the road. So he doesn't actually comprehend that the great outdoors is a great big litter box. So I have to keep one inside the van and uh, yeah, he just, he doesn't have a clue where uh, going outside to do his thing is concerned. The biggest necessity to worry about is ventilation. Cars get really hot if they're all closed up and there's no ventilation. It can get seriously, dangerously, and deadly hot inside for anyone who happens to be in them. So it is absolutely essential you have some way to keep the inside of your van cool enough for your critter, especially if you're gonna be closing it up during the day, even if you're just walking into a grocery store or something. Gotta have a way to keep it cooled down. I have a Max Air roof vent that works extremely well for me. I can put the fan on an automatic mode. So it's not an air conditioner, but as it gets warmer inside, it will increase the fan speed to blow more air through here. So that, plus leaving a couple of the front windows a little bit open, gets air all the way from the front to the back of the van so that it is never any warmer inside the van than outside. But if it's 95 degrees outside, that's still not good. That's why I didn't get to do my walking tour of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. It was a hot summer day, 95 degrees, and I didn't feel it was safe leaving this guy inside a 95 degree van. Even if it was well ventilated, it wasn't gonna get any warmer than that, but it was still too hot for him. So we ended up doing a driving tour of the Gettysburg battlefield instead. I cranked the air conditioner and then both of us stayed nice and cool. I was still able to get out and look at a few of the sites briefly, but uh, I never left the van or him alone for very long. So there's also the question of an indoor or an outdoor cat. 
Lister was an indoor cat for seven years before we hit the road, but even then he was always looking out the window and always very interested in what was going on out there. I know people who live in RVs and such who still leave their cats inside all day. And a big old RV, a fifth wheel or a class A or something like that, that's a big enough space for a cat. They're able to wander around, have their territory and all that good stuff. With me in a converted wheelchair van, that just didn't seem like this was enough room for a cat for me. It just wasn't fair and it wasn't right to keep him cooped up in such a small space. But I also didn't want him able to roam free either because Let's face it, you can get into a lot of trouble out there. So you've seen his lumberjack harness and I have a 25 foot long tether. One end attaches to him, the other end attaches to the van. So he's got a 25 foot radius around the van where he can run around like an idiot, chase things, whatever, have fun. And uh, you just can't get any farther than that. But even on a harness, on the tether and all that, you got to keep an eye on him when he's outside. His favorite game is to take his, his tether here and wrap it all around the tires or anything else that's in the general area of the van. For that, as well as just general safety, you got to keep an eye on him. So, about this fetching harness he's wearing. This is actually his second harness because he figured out how to break out of the first one. When I first started trying to train him to wear the harness, I'd put it on him and then he would just fall over limp. He got over it pretty quickly. Not every cat does. So it's not a guarantee that the harness is going to work. I got particularly lucky with this guy that it did. He does not go out after dark because all of the predators roam a lot more freely in the dark. And you try finding a black cat in the dark. I've tried and I have failed. He had to, I had to leave the door open so he came back to me that night. Unfortunately he did, but yeah, just, just don't let him out after dark, no matter what color your critter is. A few other important things to know. Your cat will attract attention. There are cat lovers out there everywhere. And just the simple fact that you have a cat with you is going to bring people over. They're going to want to check out your cat. They're going to want to pet the cat. Many people have never seen a cat on a leash or a tether before. So that's also something unusual. I have found that having a cat is a great icebreaker and way to start conversations, particularly with attractive women. So overall, having a cat can be a good thing unless you're antisocial and don't want that kind of attention. If you're not the kind who wants to talk to strangers, then well, you may have to make some different choices. So that's pretty much what I can tell you about having a cat with you on the road. I definitely appreciate his furry companionship, especially because I'm traveling alone now. It, uh, th there are challenges with having a cat on the road, but um, uh, this guy and I, we've been through so much together. We're, we're inseparable at this point. I can't imagine doing this without him. And while it would be logistically simpler to not have a cat with me, I would just get too lonely. I really like uh, having this guy curling up next to me at night. And, uh, you know, that's, that's just nice. I apologize for the lack of scenic outdoor shots in this video. I am back in Quartzsite, Arizona, waiting for some mail to arrive. And we are on our third straight day of strong winds. So I can't even go outside without the sound getting completely blown out on this camera. So uh, I had to record this inside, but, uh, you know, it's a cat video. And I figured people like cat videos. The internet is for two things. And the only one of them that can legally appear on YouTube is cat videos. So here's your cat video. I hope it's been useful.